Welcome to this special edition of the Spotlight Project Presents. Tonight, we look back at the many talented performers and artists who have appeared on our show. Along with highlights from Community Corner with Katrina Davis. Mountain Kids Minute with Avery Rule. and the many moments of wonder from our popular segment, Magic Hands. And now, please welcome your host, the very talented actress and director, Becky Chamberlain. Welcome to this special edition of The Spotlight Project Presents. Tonight, we will be highlighting the many talented performers and artists that have joined us on our past broadcasts. Over the last six months, I have had the pleasure of hosting this show and interviewing so many interesting people. Here are some of the highlights from those interviews. Here with me now is the mayor of Oak Ridge, Kathy Holston. Hi, Kathy. Welcome to our show. All right. Tell me your story. What inspired <laughs> you to move to Oak Ridge? Uh, well, uh, we all know how beautiful it is. And I had spent time up here um, for many years, you know, a couple of decades doing camping and hiking and that type of thing, and always intended to retire up here. So what has inspired you to be a community leader? I mean, you've moved here, you're inspired by the beauty of, mm -hmm. of the land, but what is it that compelled you to lead our community? Well, I, you know, I was appointed to the council in um, 2016 mm -hmm. and then elected as a counselor um, and started in 2017. And I think the reason I did it is because I saw such, uh, such hope and such happiness in the people that were here um, because they were all kind of here because they wanted to be here and I thought I could help. Tonight we have special guest Kai Botak uh, as our musical performer and here in my beautiful set is Kai. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank that you was for me. awesome. <laughs> Even with snafus, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> and it just sounded great to me. So. so tell us, how did your musical journey begin? When I was 18, I, I, I asked for a guitar for my birthday, and they got me a $99 Cortez used pawn shop guitar. And I just had wanderlust from there. And I took that guitar, and I, I just traveled and uh, took a backpack and looked you know, went all across all the states and everybody I met that played, I'd say, how do you play an A? How do you play an E? How do you, you know? Uh, and so I eventually learned to play the guitar and um, I was always, you know, a poet. I always loved to write. And so then I just transformed it into songwriting. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're self-taught and you're a natural poet. Yes. Perfect combination. Yeah. <laughs> Here to talk with us about his life and magic, Jeff Martin. Hey. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Jeff. Thank you for having me, I really appreciate it. Now, I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but I have to know, why magic? What inspired you to build a career in magic? Well, when I was in elementary school, I saw a really good magician, and it just fascinated, and then I started making up my own tricks. And then I got a magic set for Christmas, and the uh, rest is history. <laughs> so, you perform all over. What's the difference between for performing for, say, an audience like at the Magic Castle compared to performing in Lincoln County Fair? Those are family shows designed for the whole family, whereas the Magic Castle is a nightclub, and so it's all people who are dressed up and drinking and having a good time. So it's a little little different kind of show. So you're tailor making your shows based on who you have in your audience. Absolutely. Okay. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to share with us? I think we have a little bit more time. Well, sure. How about if we do something with some coins? I have here some Morgan silver dollars. And uh, it's kind of interesting what you do with these Morgan silver dollars. 
is if you hold them up and then you take one of them out and put them in your pocket, a weird thing happens. All of a sudden, you end up with two coins again. Okay, well, we'll try that again. So two coins, once again, we simply remove one of the coins, put it inside my pocket, and again, we have two coins. Here with me tonight, I have American folk artist, Sissy Kutchen. Sissy, welcome to our show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Um, great to be here. <laughs> I was reading your bio, and I was just enamored with your story of how you became an artist. Will you share with our audience how that, that story? So I don't think anyone necessarily becomes an artist. I think it's something that's always inside of you. Yeah. but I think that there are things in your life that allow you to bring that gift forward. And um, what happened to me was um, on the eve of my 39th birthday, which in our family we celebrate the eve, and um, it made me reflective and in the sense of, you know, what did I want 40 to be like? And I was uh, in a dentist's office in Montgomery, Alabama. Okay. And um, everything about it was making me uncomfortable. It was kind of creepy and okay. <laughs> not, not good. So I just looked at the dentist and I kind of flashed on how I wanted to go forward in life and on all the things that we carry and the ways we hold ourselves in. And I didn't want to keep doing that in my 40s. And so I looked at the dentist and I said, I'm not digging this and I'm not digging you. I'm leaving. And I literally got up and left and oh. I went home and started painting. I know you have some art that you're going to share with us tonight. Okay. Um, I like to tie traditional elements, blue and white china, for example, um, into the work because the work, uh, oftentimes with folk art, people will look at folk art and say, um, this belongs in my cabin in Maine or this belongs in my barn and the truth is is that folk art belongs in every collection. The art in Oak Ridge is amazing thank and I hope that everybody starts paying close attention. Well thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for being here tonight. It was thank wonderful you. to have you. I would love to give a very warm welcome to Doug Bates. Hi Doug. Hi Becky. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So, we have a lot of ground to cover in a very short amount of time, but I would really like to start with your most recent endeavor, the 58 Herald. Can you uh, share with us what, how this project began, your vision for it, things like that? The Herald. The Herald is uh, a product of uh, the news vacuum in our community. The Eugene paper quit covering the news here and the Eugene television stations quit covering any news here and then the local newspaper, the Dead Mountain Echo, went away and I had a mental breakdown and couldn't take it anymore and started <laughs> the Highway 58 Herald. Um, now I understand in 2006, is that correct, you won a Pulitzer Prize um, for in journalism for your editorial writing. I and my colleague Rick Adig at the Oregonian did win the prize for editorial writing that year, yes. You're an author. Uh, I am. And your book is called The Gift Children? Well, one of them is a, mem a family memoir called uh, Gift Children. It's about our uh, family's experience adopting across racial lines. And so that is a memoir. That's it's a family memoir, yes. Nice. Lastly, you are a recorded musician. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a, a record? I think, I think we actually have a clip uh, or uh, something where we can play a little sound bite of this. So what year was this recorded? <laughs> 1964. And you were the exterminators, is that right? Yes. You know where the Dead Mountain Echo used to be? That used to be the Union Hall. 
and uh, we had uh, dances there every Saturday night for the whole summer of 64, and we, we took the money we earned and, and cut this record. I have with me here now Trudy Hammond from the Mountain Respite and Mission Rescue Safety Animal Center right here in Oak Ridge. Hi, Trudy. Welcome to our show. Hi, thank you for having us here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you do some very important work here in Oak Ridge. Yes. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to ask you about what you do, what, I what, your, um, what your rescue mission does for the community. Well, our safety animal center, it takes in animals that are brought to us. We give them wellness checks with the vet, and then if they're adoptable, we find homes for them. If they're not, they become residential animals that we keep until their life is in the next journey. <laughs> and so you started doing this type of work quite a long time ago. This, yes. is, this is not something new for you. No. <laughs> So can you tell us about that, how you started? Well, um, I guess the very beginning was the four turtles that um, I had as a child. And then they progressed on to different species. And in 2016, I decided to turn a nonprofit uh, from the disability services that I used to do and the social work. I decided to put all that focus and skill set into the animals. So. This has been uh, sort of a lifelong passion of yours, uh, ha dealing with animals, befriending animals, and finding them basically their forever homes. Now, I know uh, a couple of years ago, right before the pandemic, um, there was a dog that needed a foster home, and I spoke with you, and I ended up fostering that dog, which was an amazing experience, and the dog eventually got adopted into its forever home, and they are pleased as punch. But I wanted to thank you personally for your <laughs> advice and, and your support during that time, because I had never done that before. And, and you were a great encouragement to me uh, to be able to do that and also to be able to let go, which was very difficult, I have to say. Mm -hmm. We weren't quite prepared uh, for that experience. Letting go is one of the hardest things. Um, the best thing about letting go is that you can keep in contact. Yes. And I thank you because I consider you people like you earth angels. Oh, well, so thank I you. thank you for, for that fostering. It really can increase the lives saved when people foster. I think we have your information up here right now, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming out today. I really appreciate you being here. I really appreciate the work that you're doing. I think it's very valuable to our community, and I think our audience would agree. Oh. Thank you, Trudy. Thank you. I am here tonight with Lauren Christopher Michaels, the Spotlight Project presents founder and director. So Lauren, uh, many people know that you have been involved with Zero Clearance uh, Theater for many years, directing shows, um, doing sets, design, and, and all of that. But what most people may not know is that before retiring, you were a professional magician and illusionist. That's right. So let's talk about that. How did that come about? Well, believe it or not, it started about... I don't know, when I was six or seven years old. And my dad used to make a penny disappear. Okay. And when I asked him how it was done, he said, it's a secret. But if you want to learn about it, I'll get you a book on magic, and you can read about it. And that was the beginning of a lifelong passion of reading and doing magic. Uh, my big break came when I auditioned for the Magic Castle in Hollywood in my early 20s. And I was accepted as a member. I worked there for probably close to 20 years on and off. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you've mentioned some of the places um, that you've performed throughout the years. What do you think your favorite uh, venue was? Oh, well, I had the chance to perform all over the United States, Canada, Mexico City, West Indies. and But I would say my favorite was Japan. I toured really? three separate times over there. I just loved Japan. And then uh, when I got back, I got asked to perform in Las Vegas, and so I had the chance to perform at Bally's, the Venetian, did a uh, two-year run at MGM Grand, then ended up at Caesars Palace. Oh, wow. And 
<laughs> so I've had one hell of a ride when it comes to this. I would say you have. So after all the, the lights and the glitter and all of that, now you're in Oak Ridge. Yeah. All that said and done, now we're fast forward to the Spotlight Project. So what, what inspired you to do this particular project? Well, uh, many years ago I had come here to the WAC and to watch a band on stage. Okay. And when I walked in, I felt like I was at home. Because like I said before, I played on so many different stages and I played many just like the stage here mm -hmm. at the WAC. Mm -hmm. And every time I come in this building, it was like, it was saying to me, I've got so much more to give. So I approached the powers that be mm -hmm. and convinced them to let me go ahead and renovate the place and they were very supportive and encouraging. So me and a happy band of volunteers yeah. just started this process about uh, going close to a year now. Yeah. So I thought, well, I wanted to figure out a way to allow the many, you know, versatile, talented performers and artists in this town to have the spotlight back on them. Hence the name, Spotlight Project. Right. I would like to introduce uh, a very special guest tonight. I have Justin Stewart here with me. Hi. Hello. So, you're a master mixologist. Tell me what that means. So there's two types of bartending. Um, the first is somebody that makes, you know, simple drinks like, you know, rum and cokes, vodka, cranberry, stuff like that. And then there is uh, bartenders that like to create their own recipes. Okay. And the art of that is called mixology. Right. I'd love to see what you have to show for us tonight. Absolutely. All right. So. The drink that we have is called the Rainbow Shot, and it is, uh, well, it's like building a rainbow in a glass and then seeing if we can pour it out just to make it the same. So, okay. I'll leave the suspense so you guys can see what happens at the end. <laughs> We're very excited. I'm most excited because I may get to try one of these. Mm. Did the magic happen? I think it did. Oh, yes! Woo! <laughs> that's yep. awesome! Oh my gosh, that's beautiful! That is definitely a rainbow. I think you will all agree at home. If you need the recipe, you know where to find him. Uh, shall we? Yes, and see, here's the cool thing. Okay. I was the smart one. These are the weaker ones, those are the stronger ones. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, so in, in addition to, to, to this amazing feat, you also have other talents, uh, namely that you are somewhat of a pool shark, I might say, or uh, a... Yes. <laughs> Well, hi, Benny. Hi. Thank you so much for being on our show tonight. Well, it's good to be here. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Except for that it's probably 105 in this building. <laughs> a little warm up on the stage. A little warm up here. It is. Here. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we have a few minutes. I'd love to talk about how you got started in music. Talk to me about that. What, what pushed you towards music? I was just a bass player. I played with some really talented musicians back then. I didn't sing, I was the bass player, and at some point I couldn't go out and work unless a band called me up. And I thought, what would I like to do with the rest of my life? And I thought, I'll get a guitar and play songs for people. <laughs> well, that's incredibly inspiring. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I wish that more people would pursue their passions in that manner. Well. And so you did, and so it's treated you pretty well. It's a work in progress. 
Well, it is so great to have you on the show. I love what you're doing. I love the, the ukulele. I've known you as a guitarist yeah. and bass player. And so to hear you play ukulele tonight was really fun for me. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Well, thank you for having me here. Thank you so much. I have with me here Jason Nehmer, and he's going to give me a demo in disc golf. Hi, Jason. Hi, Becky. How are you doing? Good. Good How are you? So uh, there are a few different styles of putting. You can do really whatever you want, but things that actually work <laughs> um, are the track stand putt. Okay. So you want to kind of point your, your toe to the basket. All right. And, you know, and if you're ever in track or anything, that's kind of the get set motion, right? So you're right. kind of pointing that way. All right. And what you want to do is you want to always point your, your disc towards the basket. That's step number one. So that's ready. Okay. And then you rock back, get set, and then go. Awesome. Yeah. Want to give it a try? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> here you go. Okay. So in the first one, yeah. let's start here. Yep. Athletics. Or that's a yep, track stand. Yeah. Okay, track stand. Yeah. Ready? And then I rock back. Yep. Use a little wrist. And go. Yeah. Look at that. You're a natural. Jason, thank you so much for being on our show tonight. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. I really appreciated the demo. I thought that was really fun. Mm -hmm. I feel like I could maybe mm -hmm. try that. I'd say you should. <laughs> Well, very cool. Um, so, I have to tell you, I really enjoyed reading your bio, oh. um, but I was very curious about your roots as a skateboarder. Oh. <laughs> so, I know you grew up in Wisconsin. I did. Correct. Yeah. And just let's just have a couple minutes about where you started and your roots for as a skateboarder, because it really seemed to me like that shaped your life and it still does to this day is correct it does, it does. okay yeah, yeah, so yeah. tell me tell yeah. me about it yeah when i was about 12 years old i was kind of an awkward kid i was taller than most and didn't have much coordination and you know being tall you think i'd be a good basketball player not so much you know and, and some <laughs> other things so but but um, my parents got me a skateboard me and my brother and and i took to it like a fish to water i loved it and um and I just, uh, it was a lifelong thing that I did. Tell me how your roots in skateboarding, what did that do for you? Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that connection? What, what was that connection for it you? It just gave me confidence in life, really. Uh, I knew I could do just about anything when I, by, by the time I was starting to pull off some maneuvers that I didn't think I would, you know, that you'd see in videos, you know? And I was just like, oh, I can do this. I'm a, you know, I, I can do almost anything. And I tried other things, like, such as disc golf. And, right and mountain biking and uh, various other things that I got into. And I, and I kind of had, I used the same mentality that I did through skateboarding. And it really helped me. Like, uh, um, basically I think of when I, when I go drive a disc, I think, I think of it as dropping in on a half pipe. I kind of, okay, here we go. Get ready, set, drop in. And like, right. let's, let's, let's make it happen. Welcome back. I have here with me tonight Rob Tarr. Rob, welcome. Thank you. Rob is a local artist in uh, Oak Ridge, and as you can see by these works, um, he is very prolific at his craft. Rob, I'm, I'm asking um, how you began your love affair with art, and I understood that you grew up um, in a household where art was very important. So why don't you tell us? Well. I went for about 30 years from when I, I was living with my parents and didn't do any art for all that time. And I had a, a, an accident while I was working. I broke an ankle, fractured it actually. And it took a, quite a while for it to, re, uh, to heal itself. And uh, in that period of time, I wondered what I was going to do with my life because I didn't think I could work again. Okay. And so I started doing, I picked up a, a box of little canvases that my wife had bought me you know they're just like nine by twelves and, and i gave myself about 30 days i figured that's all the canvases i had if i can make one good painting in that time i'll keep going well i went up to the 29th day and i didn't have one they were all crap <laughs> and and uh, I, I just i said okay give me one more something and that night I watched a movie called El Norte, uh, means going north for these people in, in South America. And the thing that amazed me about this, these people is that they have nothing, you know. And 
except they have color. Okay. And in their lives down there, they, they live with color and they love it. And so the next day I painted a painting that had color. It was still crap, but it, it, was, it was beginning. All right, let's talk about these paintings, because this is a wonderful painting. And this is called Motorcycle Mike and Mr. Cool Visit the Valley of the Flying Dogs. <laughs> so to me, it's magical. This one here is a Cadillac, and it started, uh, I started it back in 2010. And uh, I had to move my uh, studio twice. Okay. And I had took this apart. And the second time I went to put it back together, it ripped. The canvas ripped. Oh, no. And I freaked out, and I said, oh, God, I'll never finish these things. So I wrapped it up and put it away for another few years until I moved here to the WAC, into my studio. And, <laughs> and I, I said, I'm going to give this one more try. So I, I researched how to fix rips in canvases. Oh. It was very simple. You just use a little Elmer's glue and some canvas. And okay. Perfect. And so I, uh, I put it together, restretched it, and this is what came out of it. So talk to me about what's happening here. That was at Gold Beach. Uh, we were down there with our dog Molly and uh, we had just gotten onto the beach and we saw the seal climb up on, the, on that log there. And she went over there and she's looking at it and the seal's looking at her and, and then the seal just decided she had enough and she left. It is my greatest honor and such a treat to introduce Scott Hitchings, our musical guest tonight on our show. Uh, Scott, your career has taken you all over the world. You have performed with over 30 artists. You have written music, produced the music, played the music. Uh, I don't even know what else is there. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. You've done it all. <laughs> You've played with people like The Temptations, The Supremes, Jefferson Starship. How did this happen? How did you get your start? What, what went on that led you to this? Hi, Becky. Hi, Scott. <laughs> nice to see you, girl. Good to see you, too. I got to tell you, we have to go a long way back with my history in this instrument. My sister and I, Andrea, were going to learn how to play the piano, whatever it took. So at six, I started the lessons, and my sister had already taught me this one. But then the lessons came along and I said, and then came Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart. <laughs> As we moved across the country, my dad being a federal worker, I uh, ran into a small band when I was 13 in a small town called Miles City, Montana. Oh, yeah. And because <laughs> we were the only group that was playing any type of rock, it was all country up there. Uh huh, I bet it was. Uh, we were playing. <laughs> the Louie Louie. Whoa, baby. And I found that the piano was becoming more fun to me. One time I got a phone call from a band that was very popular on the beaches of California, Huntington, Malibu, all those, and got into that band and we were playing all types of Motown and dance music. And I had a good friend of mine that also played keyboard said, could you cover for me on a couple of Supremes gigs? Oh, okay. And I was like, Sure. <laughs> well, yeah. Who well, says uh, no to that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Three years into that, I was having fun. We were doing tours of Japan and all around the world. And uh, one of the Temptations decided, what a good idea to put the Supremes and Temptations together. So the first tour was called A Night of Supreme Temptation, which <laughs> I thought was a selling name for that Very group. wonderful, fitting. And the two groups worked beautifully together mm -hmm. and uh, got all that experience. And, and so you played for them both? Played for both of them, oh. yeah. That's a long night. Yeah. <laughs> the beautiful days, 25 countries, 5 million people served. Each episode of The Spotlight Project Presents is written, 
produced, directed, and filmed by a group of dedicated volunteers. From those who manage the stage, to our camera crew, lighting and sound design, video editing and marketing, all volunteers. As we look back on some of our most popular segments, Community Corner with Katrina Davis, Mountain Kids Minute with Avery and Chelsea Rule, and Magic Hands, we want to thank all our volunteers for making these possible. It's Community Corner with Katrina Davis. Hi, I'm Katrina Davis and welcome to Community Corner. Today I'm here with Marisa Lopez, Mar to her friends, the owner and head chef here at the newest addition to Oak Ridge's list of great places to eat, the Campfire, home of Cowgirl Cooking. Welcome Marisa. Thank you for being a part of the first broadcast of the Spotlight Project. Have you had any formal training as a chef? No, I have not. No, great. All trial and error and creativity. Wonderful. How long ago did you open and, and why here in Oak Ridge? So we first opened the food truck in 2015. Our first event was here in Oak Ridge. And um, the longer I stayed here in Oak Ridge, the more and more I fell in love with this community. Um, and it just, like I said, it just kind of, stum we stumbled across it, it kind of happened, and it just felt right to put roots down here. Um, yeah, I just love this community. This week we're visiting with Ben Ward, new owner of the Willamette Lanes here in Oak Ridge. This place looks wonderful. Thank you. How long has the renovation taken you? Uh, we started it last October, and <laughs> we're still in the middle of it, but I think we've done pretty good for six months worth, so... <laughs> I understand you basically had to start from scratch when rebuilding the alley here. What was your biggest challenge? Getting all the equipment to function, everything to turn on. Uh, when we started, lane one came on, no scoring came on, a couple of lights above your head here came on, and that was it. So biggest challenge was rebuilding something that's 30, 40 years old and making it come back to life. There is no replacement parts, there is nothing, so it's rebuild what you have. I know for many of us, going bowling um, with family and friends was a big part of our lives. Was that was it that way for you when you were growing up? Yeah, I did a lot of bowling as a kid. Uh, I know my mom was in the league for a long time. Growing up, teenager, I loved it. So everybody always comes in and has fun. The town needs something to do desperately. So I think it'll go good. Today I have the pleasure of talking with Sue Cathcart from the Willamette Mountain Mercantile. Thank you for being here, Sue. I appreciate it. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks, Katrina. So, how long has this wonderful place been open? The bike shop has been open since 2004. And when the owner opened the shop, he was very insistent that this be a resource for the community and also a attraction for tourism. And so we have rental bikes and we sell bikes. And then we also have an assortment of camping gear and things that you might use in the forest around uh, that surrounds us. And then um, also, newest in the shop, we have a book selection. Um, when does the mountain biking season begin here in Oak Ridge? Gosh, it typically begins uh, Memorial Day weekend and finishes Labor Day weekend. But as uh, cycling has increased in popularity, um, the season has really grown. Today I'm here with Miguel Perez from Miguel's Tacos, the new restaurant here in Oak Ridge. Thank you for being with us, Miguel. Hey, thanks for showing up. Yeah. Um, so people have been raving about your authentic Mexican cuisine. Everything you offer is made entirely from scratch, is that right? Yeah. Well, well the, there's a couple. I don't make my own fries. Uh, the flour tortillas are store-bought, obviously. That's a lot of work. And, and the store-bought street taco porridges. Everything else, yes. Uh, what made you decide on Oak Ridge as a place to open? This stretch of highway is is so unique. What you have access to in 90 miles stretch of highway, as far as nature has offered, there is no other place like this in Oregon. The amount of lakes, reservoirs, creeks, rivers, waterfalls, hot springs is unbelievable. 
Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Denise Santos of Denise Santos Designs. Thank you for joining us, Denise. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. How long have you been an artist? I, I guess the uh, gift showed up when I was in second grade. Okay. Uh, what do we have going on behind us here? That's being painted on static cone vinyl. Okay. So it gets cut out when it's done and dry. It gets rolled up and uh, shipped to my little hometown, Goodland, Florida, a little fishing community that I have kept the uh, post office painting for many years. For about three years, there's been a mermaid up there and she's looking pretty shabby. So, let the people I love and know in my little town that I haven't forgotten. Them. Yes, yes. Probably never will. Yeah. Today I'm joined by Mike Kenyon in his wood shop. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. Thank you. We really appreciate having you here. Well, as I look around, I see you have quite a variety of skills and talents. What is your background in wood, wood restoration? Uh, basically, I saw where a retired Forest Service person was putting together um, a trails group because the Forest Service was didn't have the, the budget to maintain trails anymore. So I got interested in helping with crosscut saw work. And that's kind of where, where it started with. Wow. wow. So you actually make the saw blades for the... No, no just okay. sharpen them. Just sharpen them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I actually had a guy send me one from Ohio. And when he sent it to me, I was thinking, oh, you should have called first because there's nothing I can do for this. The teeth were literally about that tall. Oh. And he goes, I've got more money than brains do what you have to do to get that saw. It was my grandfather's and I want it restored. 17 hours later. <laughs> wow. Yeah, working, working crosscut. Awesome. Another, another guy from the Midwest uh, sent me a saw to sharpen. I said, how do you want it set up? You know, for hardwoods, softwoods, cut aggressively, cut smooth. And he goes, I don't care how you do it. I just want a saw because I want to teach my grandkids how to work. <laughs> today I'm joined by Jackie Lamont, the owner of the Lion Mountain Bakery. Thank you for being with us today, Jackie. We appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. Honey. What inspired you to open up the bakery in the first place? Um, I was looking for something to do that would keep me, that would enable me not to have to drive back and forth from Oak Ridge to the west side of Eugene to go to work. And I kind of looked around and said, well, what can I do? What do we need? I really thought at the time we really could use a gym, but that was way too expensive a proposition to even consider. And so I sort of said, oh, well, we could use a bakery. I kind of like, you know, baking, feeding people. And it was just sort of an act of insanity, basically. <laughs> so there you go. Like most restaurants. Like most restaurants and, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, they have this moment where they go, oh, I think I'll do that. And, we go off and do it, so that's what I did. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you for doing that because mm -hmm. it's a huge asset to our community. Today I'm here with Mick Garvin, owner of Deep Woods Distillery in the Uptown area of Oak Ridge. Thank you for joining us, Mick. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me aboard. So how long has Deep Woods been here? Uh, we have been licensed to sell for almost exactly five years. You also have the insensitive wetlands area outside, which is a wonderful outdoor seating mm -hmm. and entertaining area with a stage, um, featuring some very talented performers. Um, what brought that idea up? When you work on Saturdays and you want to see a show, then you better work on bringing the show to you. And you also have an interest in medieval weaponry and even built several replicas over the years. How did that all begin? I have wanted to do that for decades. Trebuchets are a counterweighted uh, rock throwing device. Uh, they were much longer ranged and uh, much more accurate than a catapult. I got interested in trebuchets as a kid. My great to the 27th grandfather, uh, Edward II, commissioned the world's largest trebuchet, the Warwolf. So I think I kind of come by it naturally. I've built unusual and unlikely things before, and uh, so with the support 
of the chamber, I felt licensed to finally realize a dream. Yo, 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 what's up to Oak Ridge and Westfer, my peeps? Mom, no, not cool. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I used to be cool. It's okay. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the very first Mountain Kids Minute! I am Chelsea Rule, and this is my daughter Avery. We are native to Oak Ridge. Born and raised! <laughs> and we thought we'd create a segment where we introduce you to all the really amazing, talented, cool kids from right here in our hometown. Let's go to the park and meet some really talented sisters, Allie and Chloe. Turn to the left, fashion. Turn to the right. Ow, ow, ow. Mom, what are you doing? Well, this week's segment is on fashion, right, darling? Oh, I've got fashion for you. Hey, hey, hey. Nice, baby. Now you can vogue with Mama. I don't know what that is, but let's go meet some real fashionistas. Hi, what's your name? Marilyn Adore Max. What do you like about living in Oak Ridge? It's pretty fun and pretty cool in Oak Ridge. What do, you, what do you want to be when you grow up? A dress designer. Tell me about these drawings over here, Marilyn. I drew them in the dresses that I designed. And that one's the flower one, that's the water one. Thanks for being on the show, Marilyn. Thank you for having me and it's pretty fun on the show. Hi, I'm Avery Rule. Welcome back to Mountain Kid Minute. That's my dad, everyone. Apparently, we're going to the river. Let's go to my favorite swim spot. Welcome back to Mountain Kid Minute. I just got back from vacation, so here's some videos and clips. Roll the clips. show you around the pub, but first, let's go get my new drink from the new coffee shop. We're at the new coffee shop in Uptown Oak Ridge. We're gonna go order my drink, come on. We're at the pub, guys, come on, let's go to work. Welcome back to Mountain Kids Minute, everybody. I go disc golfing with my dad every Sunday. Let's go inside and have a bowling alley potluck party. And let's go meet my disc golf family. They might not be kids, but they're kids at heart.
morning, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't get to pie anyone in the face. Uh, I got to get to school, so I gotta go. Bye.
The goal of the Spotlight Project has always been to give local talent a place to shine. Here's a look back at the many talented performers that have graced our stage. excited to introduce tonight's first guest. He is a self-taught musician who plays a variety of rock, country, and musical ballads. Throughout the 80s, he backed up bands such as The Coasters, Shirelles, Drifters, and Joe Houston. Originally from Long Beach, California, he now calls Oak Ridge his home, along with his devoted companion. <laughs> Lucy, the Chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, please give a warm, very warm welcome to Broken Horn. <laughs> All the night I saw you standing there. And I like the way you comb your hair Now I'm waiting at the corner Standing in the rain All the time I would always call your name I love you, baby I love you, baby time I tried to make it right But you never seemed to be out of sight Now I'm waiting at the corner Standing in the rain All the time I would always call your name I love you baby I love you, baby All along I had my eye on you And you know that there's nothing I can do I 
love you, baby. All the same, I try to make you mine. But you never seem to have the time. Now I'm waiting at the corner, standing in the rain. All the time I would always call your name. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson Wax and Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly. Which one of these keys is the closet door key? Say, maybe we better see if the closet's locked. Let me take a look. Oh, it's, it's locked all right. You don't think I'd leave all my personal defects laying around for any prowler to get his hands on? I've been through this stuff a hundred times. There ain't a thing of it I can spare. Oh, there isn't? No. What's this old rusty horseshoe for? Well, I found that in 1911. So, as soon as I find three more, we can pitch horseshoes in the backyard. I see. You and betcha. Hi, mister. Oh. Hello there, little girl. What you want? Do you remember that job you promised me to take care of your baby, only you didn't have one? So I was going to bring my little brother over and take care of him. Remember? Huh? Remember? Remember? Yes. Yes. Sure. I remember. But... Well, 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 the deal is off, see? What you mean the deal is off? In the first place, there wasn't any deal. And in the second place... My mommy had to take my little brother to the doctor today, so I can't bring him over. Oh, well, that's too bad. What's the matter with your little brother? Anything serious? My mommy thinks so. Oh, she thinks so. Uh-huh, she thinks so. She thinks he swallowed a dime. Swallowed a dime. Well, say that is serious. Oh, no, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, no, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, he didn't swallow a dime, I betcha. Huh? It was only eight cents. <laughs> only eight cents. How do you know? Well, we were playing slot machine, and I fed it to him. As the fat lady says when she took up a corset, that lets me out. It ain't funny, McGee. Now, good night. Good night. She left me here all alone I'm not crying cause she left me here all alone The reason I'm crying is cause I heard she's coming home Hey, I'm pissing cause I'm drinking, I'm drinking cause I'm pissed it ain't the good time, but the bad time she missed. I ain't crying. She left me all alone. The reason I'm crying is cause I heard she's coming home. I'm not crying, she ain't sleeping here by my side. I'm not crying cause she ain't sleeping. She's coming home and I need a place to hide Hey, I'm pissing cause I'm drinking I'm drinking cause I'm pissed It ain't the good time but the bad time she missed I ain't crying She left me all alone the reason I'm crying is cause I heard
drinking, yeah, I'm drinking cause I'm pissed It ain't the good time, but the bad time she missed I ain't crying But she left me all alone The reason I'm crying cause I heard Because she's angry Angry makes me Kind of glad Hey, I'm happy Because she's angry Anger makes me Sort of glad I Stop and think about it She's the best bad time I've ever had When I stop and think about it She's the best bad time I've ever had We're going to make this ping pong ball go through my head. It's going to go in my mouth, out through my ear. In my mouth, out through my ear. Here we go. One, two, three. If it's not amazing, we're going to do huh? Right, right. Hold on. Tennis ball? I don't believe it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoy the rest of the show. Please welcome to our stage, Benny Olsen. Fly. 
Why over the rainbow? Why then, oh, why can't I? Birds fly over the rainbow. Why then, oh, why can't I? Thank you. One of my favorite movies. You are not taking the car. Now I'm a year older than you. I'm still the boss. Where, where are you not going wearing that clown makeup? Marjorie, you can't tell me what to do anymore. I'm an old woman. You're my sister, not my mother. I have decided to have a one night stand, if you absolutely must know. I'm ready for love. Linda, have you gone plum stone crazy? They cut down on your hours at the hospital. So what? Learn to knit. Good women don't go to bars or bring home some stranger. We're all witches and we should have flying monkeys. And you're plum stone crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm going out to follow my heart. And I'm not looking for a man. This is not about men. I meant that. Never again, men, for me. Then what are you blathering about? Maybe need some sleep, huh? I'm queer. Oh. Oh. I must be. I've hated men since I was 16. <coughs> Live with my sister. I like women. <coughs> are you okay? Do you need some water? Times have changed. People have changed. No, they haven't. I drove a truck for nearly 30 years. I got called names. I would have been perfectly happy cooking pot roast for any one of those guys that I drove beets and taters and onions to the sheds for. Any one of them. You were better at most men than driving anyway. So what? You were happy driving. I was. Could change my own tires too. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Wait around? Worry I'd break a nail. I mean, God damn it. It's a rough old world out there sometimes. Yeah, it is. Do you think Easy. in all these years that I didn't want to go out, find some stranger, see what all the fuss is about? But it never happened. You know, just wasn't supposed to. Well then. Come with me. We're all women now. Nobody cares what we do. We're the only ones that care what we do. Come on, sister. I already put oil in. All you gotta do is find those nice slacks and I'll let you borrow my silver necklace. I do like that necklace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was on sale. We are not foolish women. I mean, we went to work when nobody would marry us like you're supposed to when you're ugly. And poor. We toughed it out. You know, lived in this trailer for nearly 30 years. Life is what it is. I know that. But I want to know some things before I get slapped in a coffin. Like what it's like to kiss someone. But if, if I stay here, I won't change. Nothing will ever change. Do whatever the hell you want. Marjorie. You're the only friend I got. Thank you for letting me borrow your purse. Well, you'd have beat me with my own cane if I hadn't. I'm going to actually get you involved in this. Okay. So we're going to do this again, and I'm going to have you... Check out that little glass there for me. Okay. It's right. very cute. Very cute. Any holes in it? Well, only at the top. Very good. <laughs> Otherwise, I guess it'd be just a paperweight. <laughs> She's the first one that got that. All right. I'm now, we're going to take the four coins. Okay. Just like so. And watch. I'll do this really slow. You can actually hear a coin travel down through the table, which gives me one coin there, leaves me with 
across the one, two, three coins. We're gonna that do was it. cool. That's good. <laughs> okay. We're going to do that again. Okay. All right. This time you can actually hear it go. Ready? Uh huh. This gives me two coins here. Of course, should leave me with the one, two coins here. Now, one more time for the folks at home. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like that. Just making sure. All right. We're going to try it one more time. It happens fast this time. There it is. This gives me one, two, three coins. And of course, the one, two, three, four coins. Now, I'm going to have you help me out. Hold that your hand. Flat okay. This one right here. All right. Squeeze. Don't get don't squeeze too tight. But okay. what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you just barely open up your fingers so I can take one coin out, but I couldn't possibly add an extra. Okay. All right. Now you put your hand underneath the table. Okay. We're gonna take the coin like this, and we're gonna attempt to push it somewhere right in here, okay. just like that. Would you go ahead and open up your hand? Count your coins on the table. One, two, three, and four. Thank you very much. Ben. Well, this was very fun. Here is Justin Stewart performing Lucas Graham's Seven Years. Once I was seven years old, my mama told me, make yourself some friends or you'll be lonely. Once I was seven years old. It was a big, big world, but we thought we were bigger, pushing each other to the limits. We were learning quicker, by eleven, smoking herb and drinking burning liquor. Never rich, so we were out to make that steady figure. Once I was 11 years old, my daddy told me, Go get yourself a wife, or you'll be lonely. Once I was 11 years old. I always had that dream, like my daddy before me. So I started writing songs, I started writing stories, something about that glory. Cause only those I really love will ever really know me Once I was 20 years old, story got told Before the morning sun when life was lonely Once I was 20 years old I only see my goals, I don't believe in failure Cause I know the smallest wasters they can make it major I got my boys Some are still not seeking glory And some I had to leave behind my brother I'm still sad to soon I'll be 60 years old Daddy got 61, remember life And then your life becomes a bigger one I made a man so happy when I wrote a little one I hope my children come and dance it once or twice a month Soon I'll be 60 years old And I think the world is gone
yourself some friends or you'll be lonely Once I was seven years old Once I was seven years old Now I am very pleased to introduce our musical guests this evening. We have two very multi-talented musicians, Jonathan Trilla and Michael Sean as Stoner. Here's to the sky that I look upon. Here's to the earth that we're walking on. Here's to the wind that carries my song.
Dirty hair. Line of fire? No, no. Well, that had a crazy guy with gunfights. Yeah, but it's the wrong crazy guy. What was that other guy I was thinking about? That was, you know, like Mel Gibson, like signs. I don't know. You know, the one with the kid who can see the ghosts. Oh, you know, yeah. I see dead people. <laughs> yeah, ghosts. Ghosts. Yeah. No, that was the title. Ghosts. Whoopi Goldberg. What? She was in a movie. She could see ghosts too. That was ghosts. 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 Plural. No, that was that movie. That was ghosts. Oh, yeah. Okay, so babe, come back with me. We got Mel Gibson. He's in Scotland. He's got blue face paint and a broad sword. Lethal weapon! No. That was the crazy, the movie with the crazy guy and the gunfights. Okay, so did you get it to work then? No. Oh, well, what is going on? Look, babe, you saw this movie with me. I did? Didn't you? <laughs> I don't think I did. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my god, it won a friggin' Academy Award. It did? Yeah, there's battles and blood and blue face paint. And he gives this great big speech where he's like, Blah, 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 they'll never take away our, like, our dignity or something like that. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. What? He was in Dirty Harry. That's the guy I was thinking about. Forget it. I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna get use that computer. I'm gonna find the DSL. Oh, shoot! I can't go upstairs because I'll wake up. Oh, God! Uh, our child, the boy. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, upstairs. Yeah, in bed. In bed. My son. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. What's happening to me? Tommy? Oh, my God. Bobby? No. No. no we gotta so find something with this picture on it. Yes, yeah. Uh, that yeah. thingy. The, with the thing on it. Um, what? Something with his name. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Check the friggin' computer. Does it? I, I can't remember. Oh, 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 my God. We have to look up. We have oh to look it up. Look it up, thing. To find. To find the thing that to we. To find the thing that we left. Left. <laughs> that we didn't find? We'll find out. Because we can't we figure out what <laughs> our game is. <laughs> 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 I have to say that you are a special inspiration to people. So what you give to people when you are playing or when you're teaching or when you're mentoring, or when you're encouraging, is, is very special. Well, thank you. I, I and I have seen your students <laughs> and your cohorts and, and all of the above. And I can say, Scott, that with, 
without any exception, you are an absolute asset to our community. Well, I feel blessed to be able to do this. So and we are blessed to have you. Hey now! <laughs> you got a song for that? I do. Um, <laughs> and it's one that'll make you a little teary-eyed. Oh, great. Well, let me go back. I got all this yeah. beautiful makeup on. These well, girls worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> When I was 12, my piano teacher, he saw I was getting bored with the, the Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart, so okay. he said, okay. why don't you find a song and see if you can arrange it for yourself? So I went to my dad, and I said, what's your favorite song, Dad? And he said, hmm, Misty. So I said, Dad, I'm going to figure out a way I can play it at 14, and I made my own arrangement, and it goes like this. Okay. Thank you for watching this special edition of the Spotlight Project Presents. Join us for our next live broadcast on Sunday, November 14th at 7 p.m. Good night. Thank you for watching this special look back at the Spotlight Project Presents. Join us Sunday, November 14th at 7 p.m. when we welcome live on stage musical guest, Stereo Minds. I'm David Jenkins, bidding you good night from Oak Ridge, Oregon. This has been a Spotlight Project presentation, giving local talent a place to shine.